Welcome to Clay to Z. I'm Kara and welcome to the Amico Marketing Studio where we make the um, the items that you see in your Amico ads and uh, uh, chips, um, not so much anymore and uh, the layering cups and uh, where we do the product testing before uh, things are released. So our lab creates beautiful things and we make them look good for you. So uh, Hang on a moment. I'm going to see if I can switch over to chat so I can see if anybody is here. And if you are, I can see what you have to say. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. Love to hear from you. And yeah, a few people. Hi there. So, it is a beautiful Friday morning, and I have most of, most everything that I'm working on is in the kiln. So I have a few things that I need to make, and so I will just be making those when I answer any questions you have, or just say welcome to the studio. It's pretty quiet here today. Uh, usually I have a couple people in here in the studio with me, but this morning it's just. Realized I meant to get my rolling pin because I'm rolling out clay. One of the things that I forgot to get made in the last few weeks while I've been doing this, is textiles for my sculpture that I was working on. I meant to do those at the same time. Should have done those at the same time. And sometimes that happens. So I'm going to make a fenced piece. This poor tool. So old. Um, I'm going to make some test pieces well, a test piece that I'll try out some different things on. And because it's a test piece, I'm not going to be too careful about how it's made. And then Lynn says, having issues with orange velvet underglazes, glaze is clear. Is there a, orange is the only one that does this. So which, what temperature are you firing to and which clear glaze are you using? Because uh, depending on the temperature and the clear glaze used, I have seen some bubbling. Now, if it's like the glaze looks like it has little bubbles in it. That's pretty common. If it's like the underglaze is getting bumpy, it's less common. But I have some ideas about both of those. So uh, cone six. And what clear glaze are you using? Meantime, hi, Robin. Good morning. <laughs> going to look kind of like a hat, but it's going to have texture on it. Uh, Ron Roy, I have to find the recipe. Um, so I recommend that you give uh, the HF10 clear, 
clear a try. It does contain zinc. Um, so you don't want to use the, uh, some of our older green underglazes like light green or avocado because it'll make them turn brown. Uh, but it works really well with um, the underglazes that have cadmium stains in them, cadmium inclusion stains, like the orange. Uh, because some of those um, underglazes can be really active and uh, the glazes will react very strangely with them. So uh, that's one thing to consider. Another is your clay box also have an effect on your underglaze, depending on if it has a lot of impurities or a lot of iron. Is uh, and Zahava asks, is SM clear safe to use over Amico velvet white underglaze? Yes, it is quite well over the velvet underglaze. Uh, I have had excellent experience with all of the SMs and velvets. Uh, the old satin mat uh, HF12 would sometimes drag underglazes. So I don't recommend it for using with underglaze, but the SMs are all food safe and uh, they work quite well. Uh, Hannon, you're very, very welcome. Uh, I hope that that helps. Try some different uh, if if you or try some different clay bodies. And if you still are having issues uh, with the orange velvet, uh, contact our tech support team. You can find the uh, email address uh, on our website, amco.com. And go to the very bottom and you'll see a link that says contact us and you can email, uh, call our tech support team from, from our uh, And that's true for any anything. If you are having issues, um, you can always contact our tech support team here Monday through Friday. Uh, I think 8.30 to 4.30. I'm not sure the hours for our tech support team. But it's a Monday through Friday. We have a wonderful day. Good morning, Jan. So this that I'm making is, is just going to be a test pile for my sculpture that came out of the um, I remember working on it. Maybe not. There we go. There we are. So it has a lot of texture on it. So I want to uh, I want to make a test tile that has the same kind of texture. You should always make your test tiles look like what you're making. That way you get the best information. Make it out of the clay that you're going to use. Make it uh, fire it the same firing and Absolutely, always, always take notes. I know, you no, know, I always tell myself, I will, I will remember what this was. You will not remember. By the time it comes out of the kiln, you will have forgotten. Always take notes, even just taking a photo uh, before, while you're glazing your test glazes, you kind of have an idea where to start, Always make some notes and keep track because you mean firing, between glazing and firing, especially if you're in a, a communal studio where it might take a little bit longer to get fired. By the time it's fired, there's no way you're going to remember.
So other questions we have new glazes that are production and Good morning, Kathleen. For those people who don't like coil building or find it difficult for things to stay here. The tip is always to use thick coils. Use them kind of soft. Thin them out as you go. Kathleen says, by the way, my trout piece that I told you about that I did using the vinyl sticker, like your koi project, figure out how to text it to you. I will. I look forward to seeing it, Kathleen. Uh, I had so much fun with that vinyl sticker cutout project. I've done a couple of them so far. I've done leaves. I've done fish. It's just, just a great way to get lots of visual texture. Hmm. Where did my paddle go? Well, I can use a scraper. I just want to give it a little flattening just like the figure has. So I'm using my same clay body, I'll fire it to the same bisque temperature. And I, I left this little uh, edge at the bottom just in case anything runs. I don't expect any of the glazes that I'm going to use to run. Generally, for sculpture, I use matte glazes and stiff glazes and under glazes. Uh, I personally like sculptural forms to have more satiny glaze surfaces instead of high gloss. On what I'm making. So like an abstract form, I think you can get away with just a surface. I feel like figures, I like them to, to have a flat surface. And I put a little bit more coil right there so it's the same height all the way around. By the way, somebody was asking me, uh, not not in the stream, but um, in life, somebody who was visiting the studio was asking me about my my uh, water sprayer because this is a really good sprayer and uh, much more durable than most sprayers. Uh, 
I found it at my local big box hardware store. It works great. One of the keys that I have found for water sprayers, if you decide to go the, this route, is you want to look for one of these things on the end of the straw that goes in. It's just a little screen, but it helps prevent stuff from going into the sprayer, clogging it up. And I find that, that having one of those in the sprayer uh, extends the life of your spray bottle quite a bit. Just weird, silly things. I used to get the kind of spray bottles that you find in beauty supply areas, and they always very, very early. This is not the same height. I'm just going to cut the whole thing. Just one height. And then I'm going to set it aside to dry and I will come back and next week I should have it ready to test on so I can decide what I'm going to do with my bust over here. easy enough. So I'm going to set that aside. And my other project that I need to work on, so I have a couple of boxes that I need to make. So I'm going to get started with that. Sometimes I feel like this is almost like an open studio session. You can just drop in, see what I'm working on, work in your studio. Sorry, this is going to shake the, the camera a little bit. way so knock it over accidentally. Yes, I do have a slab roller here, but I didn't feel like walking away from the camera. So I'm just going to roll this out by hand. For many years in my own studio, I did not have a slab roller. I do love having slab rollers though. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with this one is cut out a lid top. So this first box I'm making is going to hang on the wall. It'll be a decorative box. So this is gonna be the top. And I'm gonna leave that set aside because I want it to be thicker. Sense in a moment. I'm gonna thin this out. So I'm going to separate this. So I do a lot of wall pieces. Wall pieces. Kind of bridging that gap between painting and sculpture.
I'm going to set this slab aside so that I can come back to that in a moment. But I'm going to I have my top. Let me move this down. I have my top. And I'm going to use this big toothy scraper to make really deep texture. Oh, it's tearing. Deep texture. There we go. And then I'm going to lay that face down. I'm going to cut. You'll notice I'm not being terribly precise. This one is a model. We will see if I'm going to make And I'm going to just gently, gently scrape the back of this because I don't want to get it, I don't want it to get, uh, I don't want it to mush the piece. Gently, gently, and then I'm going to attach the slabs on the back. Lightly miter these corners, which means I make them an angle. So it's like a 45 degree angle instead of a straight 90 degree angle. They kind of fit together a little bit. And they're not exact. That's okay. I'm going to be doing things to them to make them more precise as I go along. Do I have questions? Everybody having their morning tea? Anybody have good plans for A lot of festivals going on in my area. Everybody's so quiet. I know there's still some people here. Everybody's so quiet. So I've made a box. Now to hang this on the wall, it's always the tricky part. I don't like to have any of my hanging stop showing. I don't want anything to show. I want it to be invisible. Just like if you were hanging a painting on the wall, you would not put the wire where it's visible. Sometimes, sometimes you do. But I don't want to do that. So there's a couple different ways that I do this. One is to do slabs and then But what I'm going to do, is I'm going to join these inner seams a little bit. I'm not going to join 
the to the sides quite yet. But um, I'm gonna make lugs to go inside. And how I make my lugs? Maybe you didn't hear that. I'm gonna make lugs that go inside. So I take my two little wads of clay and I squish them and squish them. So little. And then I take a tool. Let's see. Usually I have some chopsticks in my toolbox. Here's my toolbox. And this is not all of my tools because I am definitely one of those crazy people who has a jillion tools. But I take something that's small. Usually I have some chopsticks in here, but I think that they uh, ran away. And I put a hole into each of the lugs right in the center. I don't need the Terribly big, but I don't want it to be too small because I'm going to want to put picture wire through here. So, you know, a, a good size is like not this end of the needle tool, this end of your needle tool. If that can go through it, it should be. And I like to smooth out the, the ends. I don't want it to be sharp where it might uh, soft on the wire. And then I'm going to take these lugs and score just like I always do. And I'm going to attach them just below the edge, one on each side, and fairly close to the top, or what I'm going to call the top. And if you want to be really thorough, you can always do four lugs, and then you can always change the direction that something's going to be so the way I've done this, just two lugs, it really can only get hung one direction. And be careful when you're attaching them that you don't squish the holes shut. There we go. So I'm going to let that set up a little bit before I, I um, worry about joining because I want that front face to not get too squished from being handled around. There I have a little textured box that'll hang on the wall. So that's box number one. I'm going to leave that face down because the cement board that I'm working on will dry out the clay pretty well. So that, ready to go. And my next box, hmm, uh, let's see, it is 11 o'clock, we've been in here for half an hour. I'm going to make another box. This one's going to be a decorative box. So it's going to do it pretty much the same, but this one's going to sit face up, so I don't need to worry about the uh, joining. I can join how I like. We've been here for half an hour. Does anybody have any last questions for me this morning? Otherwise, I will let you all go. Hope you have a beautiful weekend.
Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, Kathleen, I look forward to seeing the, the uh, results. Uh, you are trout plate, your trout piece. And next week, I'll have all kinds of stuff to be glazing and making and uh, maybe even some new things that I've not shown you yet. So thanks for joining me on my clay adventures. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend.